Uh, hi, this is David, and this is part 11 of uh, game theory as it applies to poker. Made as elementary as possible. And at this point, I'm going to say that if you haven't watched video 10 yet, I'd advise you to stop this and watch video 10. And if it's been some time since you've seen video 10, I'd like you to watch it before you watch this because we're going to continue right where we left off uh, without any review. Uh, we were discussing uh, constructing our poker range so it would be unexploitable. Our opponent was laying 2.22 to 1, so he needs to fold about 30% of the time to make a profit on his bluffs. Therefore, we're going to be calling or re-raising with about one-third of our opening range, the very uh, strongest part of it. This consists of the top pairs, pocket aces, kings and queens, and ace-king. This is going to make up one-third of our total range. So when our opponent attacks us, one-third of the time he's running into a very strong hand. Uh, the other two-thirds of the time, we'll have other hands. Now, if we multiply the number of combinations in our premium hand by three, we come to 7.8% of the total hold'em hands. If we were to just raise with those, that would be fine if we did nothing but open raise or limp. Uh, open raise or folding, never limp. But that would shortchange us. We would deny ourselves the opportunity to play hands against worse players. So instead, we want to have a polarized range. Okay, if we were to play all these hands and be attacked by a, an aggressive three better, uh, he would he might have the polarized range, and we'd be stuck with these medium strength hands, which are in a lot of trouble when the big money goes in against the polarized range. And if you don't understand that, watch video seven for an explanation. So we're going to take out these medium strength hands from our raising range and we're going to replace them with hands that are almost good enough to limp in with, but not quite. Uh, we're going to limp in with pocket eights, nines, tens, and most of the time with jacks, and these bigger suited broadways. Now the hands that are almost good enough to call are things like the offsuit broadways, the big ones, the smaller pocket pairs, suited connectors and one gaps, and uh, you know the smaller pocket, uh, smaller suited aces. Okay. Some of these hands are better than others to use as buffs, uh, and I'll explain the reason why. But before we take out all of these hands from our raising range, uh, we should leave a couple of the stronger ones of the medium strength hands in. And I'll explain there's two different reasons for that. One reason is we may wish to four bet bluff sometimes. Now in low limit online games and in live games, I would advise you to almost never four bet bluff. Okay, uh, you may after you get better find some opponents against whom this would be a nice thing to do. They may be three betting you a whole lot, but in general, the population of players uh, will be three betting you far less frequently than optimal. Therefore, you can exploit them by never four bet bluffing. Okay, when you actually play back, if they're three bet, you will have a very strong range. But there's a second reason. Sometimes they, they cause you to defend with a bigger portion of your range than you would like to, okay? When he was laying 2.22 uh, to 1, okay, over here, this is when we raised to 20 and he made it 60. He had a break-even threshold of 69%, and when he has that, we only need to defend with about 31% of our range or so, and we were, that was our plan uh, with our top 34 hands. But suppose he raises to a smaller amount. Suppose he makes a min raise uh, to 40. Okay, now he's getting a much better price. He's only laying 1.48 to 1, and his break-even threshold is 60%. This forces us to defend with 40% of our range. In fact, uh, when we made it 20, we were only making a raise of $15 because it was $5 to call. So he only has to double our raise. He could actually raised to as small as $35 here. Now, if, we, if he does this, he's only laying about 1.3 to 1, and his break-even threshold is about 56%. That's how many folds he needs. When he does this, it forces us to defend 44%, instead of just about 33% or 30%. So that means, uh, when we look at value hands here, which they have only to 34 hands total, and 7.8% or 8% is going to add up to about 100 combinations total. We see that 
uh, 34 combinations to defend with is not enough. Okay, if if this was his break-even threshold, 56 percent. Okay, we're going to be need need to be defending with about uh, 45 percent. Okay, we would need to add about 11 hands to this. Okay, now what 11s do we add? We want them to be rather strong hands, and these will be hands that we can continue with when he three bets is small. When he makes a big three bet, uh, we will keep only pocket queens a better or an ace king, and we'll usually be four betting with him. It'll either be just four betting or shoving. Uh, but when he bet, you know, when he comes back with a smaller amount, we need to add some hands, and we can keep the ace queen hands in there. What this will do by keeping ace queen in there is add an additional sixteen hands. 16 combinations here, okay? Uh, this has us defending uh, 50, uh, 50 times. Now, we were looking for 11 more hands to add to reach our 45%, but in truth, that's only the case when we're four betting, okay? If we're flatting instead of four betting, we need to add about twice that many, and this is the reason. When we're four betting against his bluffs, we're cutting them off cold, okay? Uh, we're coming over the top, and there's nothing he can do. But if we're flatting, even if we're causing him to only break even on his bluffs, what that means is, is that he's going to free roll the flop. Okay, so if he if he three bets us, and we call with the frequency that he just breaks even with his garbage, that means that he's basically seeing a flop for free. He's going to be in position with initiative and gets to see free flop, and in the long run. That will be profitable for him, even though his plan to make an automatic profit failed and it only broke even. Okay? So if you follow that, for this reason, instead of adding just 11 hands to our premium range, what we need to do to defend himself if he starts betting smaller is instead of adding 11 more hands here, we're going to add 22 hands. Okay? So we have 34 hands against his big three bets, but when he comes back with a mini raise or something, we're going to add about 22 hands. Ace-Queen alone is a non-payer that adds 16 combinations. Well, I add Ace-Jack suited, that's another four combinations, that gives us 20 combinations. So now we just need two more combinations to add. 